Hi. This is Sandy Shellis from Environmental Coffee House. And today I uh, am here for the first of actually two today. Today I'm asking the question about the hurricane that's going on now in southeastern Texas, Hurricane Harvey. And it has brought so many questions to me about climate change and its effect on weather all over the world and these hurricanes and and tornadoes and all of those things that happen. So I've been doing quite a bit of research on this uh, this morning basically and started last week but this morning for the most part. And I want to discuss some of my findings in layman's terms, you know, as we are not obviously not a scientific channel. We are environmental coffee house. We do a lot of things. I, uh, I've been watching television like probably a lot of you. I've also been watching YouTube. I've seen videos of Texas and I feel horrible and, and we feel horrible for what's happening down there. It is really, really, really pretty, pretty difficult. And I'm just fooling around with this thing a little bit. Um, I'm going to say hi to people. Hi, Kim and hi, Trevor. But this is going to go on YouTube afterwards, and I'm trying to make it so I can uh, do a pretty decent uh, presentation here. You can see I'm sitting behind where our little tornado hit, and you can see some of there's some of the damage from uh, Mother Nature in this area. Uh, not pleasant. But all of this has brought me to have so many more interests than I've ever had in this stuff. So I'm going to begin because, you know, your gut can say, my God, these things are so much worse because of climate change. But does the science bear that out? Do we know? Can we say this definitively? So as I've gone through, I'm going to read some of my stuff because it's a lot easier for me to, to have my notes, read some of these things, and uh, go through it with you. So I'm going to start with something that I read from the Bulletin of the American Meteorological Society, and it was published earlier this year. And it's, quote, A storm that intensifies 60 knots in just 24 hours, just before landfall, occurring on average once per century in the climate of the late 20th century may occur every five to ten years by the end of this century. While 24-hour pre-landfall intensifications of 100 knots, which are essentially non-existent in the late 20th century climate, may occur as, frequent, as frequently as once per century by the end of this century. Even holding the overall basin frequency constant, which right now I'm not going to be able to tell you what that is, the incidence of storms that intensify rapidly just before landfall increases substantially as a result of global warming. But that doesn't give you the answer. It really doesn't. It does not tell you or me that global warming is the cause of the intensification of storms. We can think that, but the scientists don't know. They really don't have definitive answers. And I, I'm going to read something else. I, I, I made some notes on which I thought would be interesting the, about climate change influence. Most scientists that, that I'm reading can't give a definitive answer. There's different things involved in all these. There's sea level. And the sea level is higher along the Texas coast than it was 100 years ago or more. At least that's part of this because of climate change and the melting ice and swelling of ocean water through and, and there are other factors in this mix such as the sub, subsistence of the land and uh, another way that hurricanes affect is that it is expected to lead the average storm to be more intense and sure enough in 2015 we saw what may well have been the most intense storm ever measured, and that was um, Hurricane Patricia in the Northeast Pacific, which, max, which had the maximum sustained winds of 213 miles per hour. That's a lot. 
That is a lot. And it, it's, it's incredible. Now, they say that that's not so relevant, uh, relevant of a trait for Harvey, though, as it falls well shy of most intense hurricanes before making landfall. Now, this wasn't written today. But what's happening today, we know, it, it's not just um, from the hurricane last night. It's the rainfall. It's all of the rainfall. And that is what is really affecting all of us that are, we're watching the news of that happening. But I'm going to say one more thing before I go on with my notes. It's not just happening in southeastern Texas. I have a site called Understanding Climate Change. They document incredible situations that happen all over the world. And I'm posting them now probably once a week, maybe even more. They're documenting things that are going on in India and China and all over the world that I guess the United States um, mainstream media doesn't necessarily show us. And it is for the most part, it's really unsettling, and we don't see it. They have shown us places that I had no idea of the things that were going on. Of course, we knew about the fires in British Columbia, but understanding climate change as we share, and I look at that, is they are really doing it. They're getting this documentation, and they're getting the graphic images for us to see where our news is not showing us. So I'm going to go back and... Uh, there's another aspect that I read about that this storm, and it's also relevant in a climate context in the sense that it's something we should expect to see more of is rapid intensification. So while the scientists may be saying that we're not going to see a lot of storms, we're not going to see storm after storm after storm, but the storms that we do see are going to be really amplified for the most part, because Thursday morning, Harvey was a tropical storm with 45 mile an hour winds. By Friday afternoon, it was the top end of a category two strength with 110 mile per hour winds, and it was expected to strengthen a lot more before landfall, and we all know it went up to what, a category four or five? I'm not even sure yet. Um, but there have been intensifications much more rapid and alarming than this and I talked about there was Hurricane Wilma in 2005 and I talked about Patricia in 15 but in general any major storm in storm strength close to land is a huge risk because people have little time to prepare for it and um, there's you know quite a bit of research on that now, there's a Princeton geoscientist named Gabriel Vecchi, and he told, he, he's been interviewed, and he was talking about this, and he said the way we see hurricanes today, uh, where we have a vast array of satellites, we have aircraft reconnaissance missions, we have a number of different sensors. It's very different from what we saw in hurricanes 100 years ago. It used to be records from ships at sea. So really, all we knew was what these ships recorded if they made it back through the hurricanes. So we do have a lot more. And this, uh, this guy is very interesting in what I read. Um, he said uh, something else. Oh, yeah. So he said 100 years ago if a hurricane uh, was going to um, be seen at sea, it would have come across the path of some unfortunate ship, and that ship would have to record its existence. So that is what we were, were dealing with 100 years ago. So we've really come a long way. We've come so far, it's, it's quite amazing, wouldn't you say? It really is. So while scientists are noticing more intense hurricanes, they can't be certain if it's just because hurricanes have grown more frequent and powerful or because scientists have just gotten better at spotting and documenting them. So, you know, for the most part, I'm not going to be able to answer my main question with a yes, because we can't blame it on climate change totally. He says that um, 
climate scientists expect global warming to fuel more intense hurricanes and tropical cyclones over the coming century. So this creates a bit of frustration, he says, for him, and a little bit of a puzzle for the whole scientific community as to how to deal with the fact that our past records don't allow us to test the predictions that they have, um, they've made, you know, or predictions that they were working on based on their, uh, the information they have on hurricanes, right? So another person, and we all know her, uh, Catherine Hayhoe, she points out that seasonal hurricanes are a natural part of the weather system in the Gulf Coast, and attributing them to um, the cause of every single storm entirely, entirely to climate change is currently an impossible task. So you really cannot do that. She says, uh, once you get down to a small regional level, hurricanes are so rare and random that you would not be able to detect a robust trend even if there is one. This is another person. This is John Nielsen Gammon, uh, Texas state climatologist. So I found a lot of stuff from uh, a lot of different people. But did climate change driven factors make Hurricane Harvey more destructive? So this was... Uh, another article and I probably could put all my stuff up I probably will put all these articles up researchers can point to a direct relationship between warmer water temperatures and an increase in tropical cyclone formations but that link between warm water temperatures and an increase in tropical um, you know cyclone formations it, it, it requires several other ingredients like specific wind patterns to form Climate change is definitely setting up conditions that are known to make storms more destructive, uh, including heating up the oceans. Nielsen Gammon says, the, warm, the warmer the Gulf water is, the greater the amount of moisture will be available to fuel the rainfall. Now, that's what we're seeing, right? We're seeing the rainfall, the awful, awful rainfall, and all of those visions that we're seeing on, on television. It's very scary. And Nancy just came on and she said that the, the jet stream is holding it in place. Thank you, Paul Beckwith. Yes, I watched Paul Beckwith's two um, hurricane videos this morning. And they are posted on Environmental Coffee House if anybody wants to look at them because they were very helpful. So all in all, you know, everything I am looking at is, well, we cannot just say Hurricane Harvey is, is worse. We can't say Hurricane Harvey is being exacerbated because of climate change. But there are things that are happening in the scientific community that will give us more answers. However, the scientists that I've been reading about said maybe within 10 years. It's a long time. It's a long time when climate change is affecting a lot of other things, and we well know it. We do. And the near-term human extinction, uh, you know, people that I am in all of the groups, and what does Guy McPherson says, what do we have, 10 years? So do I am not going to sit here and say anything about it. I always let you decide what you think from the information that we give you. This guy, um, Nielsen Gammon, said we've seen an increase of 30% in very heavy rainfall and intensity across Texas anyway. The US EPA uh, website notes that rainstorms in Texas are becoming more intense and floods are becoming more severe. So in the coming decades, storms are likely to become more severe. And excuse me, but I'm squinting so badly, I'm gonna have to put these on. Uh, and then, of course, there's the sea level rise. Global warming is raising sea levels along Texas coast by almost two inches per decade, according to the EPA. Sea, le sea level rise makes storm surges that are much higher, says Nielsen Gammon. Officials currently warn the storm surge for Harvey is expected to bring life-threatening flooding at heights of 6 to 12 inches above ground level along the coast, and now we've been seeing it might even be more. It might even be more. And it's live all over. Everywhere. If you turn on uh, YouTube, you can see live streams of things happening pr pretty much all over southeastern Texas. 
Um, of course, now we all know that the workers at 39 offshore uh, petroleum production platforms and an oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico, they were evacuated on Thursday afternoon in anticipation of Hurricane Harvey. Um, over the past century, now this is really interesting to me. I don't know, maybe because I'm a geek, but um, offshore platform heights have risen with sea level and storm intensity. In the 1940s, they were 20 to 40 feet above sea level. Now, in the, it was, in the 1990s, they rose to 70 feet. Now, after Hurricane Katrina and Rita, platforms in the Gulf sit 91 feet above sea surface. What does that mean for the technology that they need to drill the shit out of the ocean? Hmm? So it's, if it's 91 feet now, they have to come up with more expensive technology. They have to go farther and farther to drill. Yes, exactly. But you don't hear too much about the fossil fuel industry in this hurricane. They're not talking about the fact that Corpus Christi, what is that, um, fossil fuel central? So um, after the storm is over, the scientists will do what they call an event attribution. We know they're going to they're gonna assess whether the hurricane would have been less intense in the absence of human-driven climate change, much like the researchers did with Katrina, uh, and one team had found that under climate conditions of 1900, Katrina storm surge would have been anywhere between 15 and 60 percent lower. Hi, Loretta. While all that is going on, the oil and chemical companies are burning off or flaring at this minute. My gosh. So that's what they're doing down there because of their fear of their beloved fossil fuels. Uh, anyway, um, researchers, including the experts at NASA, point out that already clear effects of, cl of a changing climate, warmer air, warmer water, sea level rise, could make any storm that develops more intense, which could have happened here, you know, it could have, in the formation of a tornado. And uh, I had been to the local supermarket talking to the, the gal that was checking me out. And I asked her, after we had a conversation, I, she, she knew about my husband's accident, and I asked her, you've lived here how long? She said, her whole life. And I said, okay, your whole life. Have you had tornado warnings? Has this happened? And she said, absolutely no. Absolutely no. She doesn't remember anything. It's just, you know, local lore, right? So the New York Times had an article, and they also um, they continue to uh, talk about their um, publishing of the uh, article, the National Climate Assessment by the 13 federal agencies linking hurricanes. And they say, of course, that it's still emerging. That science is still emerging, which is what I've been saying. It's still emerging. Temperatures have been rising, and theory and computer modeling suggest an increase in storm intensity in warmer world, a warmer world, yes. And the models generally show an increase in the number of intense storms. But, um, you know, she says, hey ho, she says that uh, even if global warming does not change the number of storms, and this is what I said before, there could be the intensity for insanity. So, when I watch those videos and I see roofs being torn off and I see the way these homes are constructed, and I, I was sitting with my husband and I said, look at these roofs. He's a roofer. He was a roofer and a cider. Look at the way they built them with nothing. You know, there are ways to build resistant homes to hurricanes of categories three and maybe even four. But do they do it? Do these, these, uh, these builders do this? No. They're building these developments, they're building these homes as cheaply as they can to get the most money out of them as they can. And, and you can see right on television that fact, that you see just a shingle roof, one level of plywood, that's it, one level of plywood, and boom, you, they're, they're open. And that is really not how you build a hurricane-proof home. 
if you live on a coastline of any coast, anywhere. It's not how you do it. So that's got to change. And I can't see how insurance companies are not making that that case to change that. So um, Dr. Hale also noted that scientists are not saying that hurricanes are necessarily caused by climate change. No, but they're being affected by them. Of course they're not being caused. We've had hurricanes all my life. We know this, right? She says, we care about a changing climate because it exacerbates the natural risks and hazards that we already face. People always want to know, is it climate change or is it not? And what she says, it's in between. So I'm going to finish up with this information from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the Geophysical Fluid Dynamics Laboratory. Now, that's a mouthful, huh? They say landfall has nothing to do with climate and hurricanes. We could get several landfalls year after year after year, and that still has nothing to do with climate. It's the energy put into the oceans and the change in the jet stream, which is what Paul talks about, that um, from climate that makes a great deal of difference. The jet stream is expected to sail uh, to stall out more often, moving across the earth, which adds to damage from intense storms, not moving on. So that's what's going to happen, or that is what's happening in Texas. It's going to sit and sit and sit and create more and more and more rain, more and more flooding. A very good friend of Environmental Coffee House, Cindy Kay, lives down there. I texted her. She's okay. She said they're not, she's in Houston. They're not quite flooded, but she sent me pictures and showed the waters by where she is. It's, it's there. Uh, the jet stream is always weak in the summer, especially that far south. There is speculation that uh, the fall winter polar jet due to Arctic ice could be an issue. The subtropical jet is not part of that speculative theory. Now, I leave all this to Paul, you know, to discuss with us. Uh, but I will read, it is premature to conclude that human activities, and particularly greenhouse gas emissions that cause global warming, have already had a detectable impact on Atlantic hurricane or global tropical cyclone activity. That said, human activities may have already caused changes that are not yet detectable due to the small magnitude of the changes or observational limitations or are not yet confidently modeled example aerosol effects on regional climate anthropogenic warming by the end of the 21st century will likely cause tropical cyclones globally to be more intense on an average by 2 to 11 percent according to model projections for globally I mean, for the uh, IPCC A1B scenario. Well, we all know how I kind of feel about the IPCC projections from what I've read. Uh, I'm not 100% sold on the IPCC. But this is a government website. And I don't know if I can even see the words climate change from this. Uh, they say this change would apply an even larger percentage increase in the destruct destructive potential per storm, assuming no reduction in storm size. So that's a recurrent theme through this whole thing, is it not? Maybe less storms, larger magnitude. There are better than even odds that anthropogenic warming over the next century will lead to an increase in the occurrence of very intense tropical cyclone in some of those basins I talked about. And so uh, the increase in storm occurrence is projected. Despite a likely decrease in the global numbers, and they're talking about cyclones. So the last thing they say on this was that um, anthropogenic warming by the end of the 21st century, century will cause tropical cyclones to have substantially higher rainfall rates than present day ones, with a model projected to increase of about 10 to 15% for rainfall averages. Uh, within about 100 kilometers of the storm. So we're seeing, and on that website, we're actually seeing, uh, unpre they said on that website that there were unprecedented floods. Unprecedented. Now, I've got my iPad out here with me, and uh, it's on their website. And uh, basically what they 
they put on that website was it is causing catastrophic catastrophic flooding my heart and all of our hearts should be breaking for those people but it's not just those people it is not just the people of South Texas we're talking about the entire world we're talking about the globe we're talking about the planet we're talking about what's happening what's happening that's causing things like this in my yard yeah it looks like I'll have a lot of uh, a lot of um, wood right so we just have to burn co2 because of the trees that fell but if you look you know this is the kind of thing that's happening all over the world people are being displaced everywhere this is just another piece on my property that we haven't done yet because it's in the woods and this happened a month ago you know and uh look at that one tornado in western new york that's insanity i think but it's it's insanity in the world that we live in now completely different completely different and everything that i read is telling you that that it is being very measured the approach towards saying that and attributing in this new attribution science is um is attributing uh the the hurricanes specifically or solely to climate change can't do that because we've had them in memoriam you know but what we have to do is we have to pay attention and we have to pay very close attention and we have to remain or become the activists that we are and we have to think about the people in other places besides our own backyard even though our own backyard is where we need to help people in the immediacy we have to know what's going on in India and China and all these other little countries that are having catastrophic climate events themselves that we're not seeing on mainstream media so if you could stay with us, we will put on an environmental coffee house. We will put on understanding climate change. We will put up climate state. We will put up Paul Beckwith. We will put up everything that is important so that we can reach our teaching and educating. Um, well, that's what we want to do. We want to reach that goal. We want to teach and we want to educate at environmental coffee house. That being said, all of us, all of us definitely need to, whatever you feel in your heart, if you're religious, if you're not religious, if you say a prayer, if you send spiritual um, healing karma to southeastern Texas, please do that. Please do that. And also, while you're there in that part of your heart send it to the people all over the world that are suffering that you see on the videos I have put up on environmental coffee house Heidi says just to remind folks here we've had at least um, what did you say seven tornado warnings and at least five touchdowns in Maine that's really rare in Maine just like it is Heidi here in Western New York that's a little crazy and Mike says he just got his power back in Houston. Great. And I hope Cindy's okay in Houston. Mike, I'm so happy that you have uh, you've signed in with us. And I hope that you got to hear some of what I was talking about, um, that really Hurricane Harvey is not something we can 100%, even 50% attribute and say, oh, it's climate change that's making it worse. But the science is moving. And the science is going to be able to tell us more. Coming years. I hope we have those years. I think we'll have those years because always I tell you I take the hopium. A lot of people may not. I do. I do because I guess it's the, the, the fact that I have a 28-year-old daughter I take the hopium for. Uh, Heidi, you said it's very hard for me, Heidi, with this. Um to see all the the quotes um i mean the questions i'm so sorry so if i can't i'm sorry we'll just have to look at them after and in the comments we'll answer each other okay so for today i want to thank you all for coming 
and uh, watching and thinking about all of the people that are affected by all of these cli climate events that are going to just get worse in our lifetime. And I want to thank you again for supporting Environmental Coffee House. Um, come back at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. I have an interview with Ian Golden. He is running on the prog as a progressive to uh, get a spot to try to unseat Tom Reed, who is the congressman from the 23rd District in Western New York, who is what he calls an all-of-the-above energy guy, which means that Tom Reed, he is a proponent of fracking. He was for the Northern Access Pipeline, and uh, Ian's in, the interview is going to be interesting. I, I think, I hope you come back to listen to Ian, because the more progressives we get in 2018 into Congress and kick out all of those deniers and, and, and get these young, fresh voices in, this is what we need. So please come back and watch Ian. And Heidi said, read the post, what are the authorities doing to ensure that all of the toxins <laughs> left from all of the flooding from the gas and car? What do you think they're doing? Do you think that's on their mind? No, I don't think that's on their mind. So all of this stuff will wash into the ocean. That's what I think, but of course, I'm no expert and I'm not down there. So everybody come back 8 o'clock tonight so you can see our next congressman from Western New York, Ian Golden. Okay? You guys have a great day. Peace. And if you missed the beginning, go back. And don't forget to watch Paul Beckwith's videos that he did on the hurricane as well. Peace. I love you. Bye.